NFL free agency is going hot right now, but we're wondering what's going to happen with former Sun Devil Brandon Ayuk. You are Locked On Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Richie Bradshaw, and I will be your guide for everything Arizona State Sun Devils. A special shout out to my everydayers who are here every day. And don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications wherever you're getting your podcast. Stay in touch with the show by following me on Twitter at RichieBrads36 and the podcast at LO underscore Sun Devils. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off of your first purchase. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back in. On today's edition of the show, we are going from college to the pros and having a topical conversation because right now, Arizona State Sun Devil Brandon Ayuk has been in the forefront of a lot of conversations and he has for the last what feels like two years is the talks of him being traded from the San Francisco 49ers who of course drafted him back in the uh, 2020 NFL draft he was very good at Arizona State one of the best receivers of the last 10-15 years and that's with only playing two years at Arizona State and gets to the pros and I, I would tell you that he came out pretty well 700 yards, seven touchdowns as a rookie. Uh, He's only gotten better with each year. And then this past year, he just exploded for 1,300 yards, freaking 17.9 yards per reception. Like, he was a beast this past year. Of his 75 catches, 61 of them went for first downs. I mean, dude was just dynamite. And yet, the 49ers have him on the trade block. And it's such a weird situation because you look at it and you're like, this is one of those guys that you don't want to let go. And look, when you are a team that's building for Super Bowls and whatnot, you do have to make difficult decisions. And Brandon Ayuk is one of those difficult decisions that the 49ers are going to have to make. And we're going to break it down on this show because Brandon Ayuk is such an interesting conversation. And with free agency going on right now, feels like a good time to have this conversation on this podcast. So we're going to go ahead and start with what's going on. And what's going on is the 49ers may or may not be moving off of Brandon Ayuk. There's been conversations for years. I remember back in 2021, after his second season, there were rumblings that Kyle Shanahan didn't want Brandon Ayuk on the team and they wanted to trade him. His third year, he went over a 1,000 yards. They pick up his fifth-year option. This year, he's just amazing. Dude was one of the 10 best receivers in football, and he's flourished in the 49ers offense. He's he's gotten better, excuse me, every single year. He's just improved, 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 improved. He's one of the best route runners in football. He's got just sticky hands. He's able to grab everything. You put it in a zip code, he's going to come down with it. Big plays, he does it all. The problem for the 49ers is they're already paying a wide receiver in the form of Debo Samuel. So you have to understand that with cap restraints, it's going to be difficult to pay the two. But here's the thing, you should be paying the two. And quite frankly, if you are being forced to pick one over the other, it's Brandon Ayuk over Debo. And there's a lot of different things that factor into that. The first and biggest is availability and Debo has missed a lot of time over the last three years Brandon Ayuk has missed one game that's it that's availability you hear the classic saying your best ability is availability and I'm somebody that definitely preaches that I want you on the football field you're you're not very good and useful to me if you're not and Debo Samuel one of the one of the 15 if not 10 most talented wide receivers and the fact that he can run the football too just brings that much more uh, value to your offense. But Brandon Ayuk as a receiver is better than Debo Samuel. And the 49ers are contending right now. And for at least one more year, 
they are going to have quarterback Brock Purdy on just the cheapest contract possible. And we'll talk about that a little later, but they need to find a way to retain Brandon Ayuk. I do not agree with these trade conversations. And I don't think that this is the best interest of the 49ers to be moving off of Brandon Ayuk. He is so important to this offense. He's so pivotal. And he's turned into a deep uh, deep threat for the team. And he's turned into a, a really savvy receiver who can beat you in more ways than one. We talk about when you get to the pros, size doesn't separate from defensive back, speed and route running does, and he does both. I mean, he truly is a top 10 receiver, and I'll listen to him being higher because he's just a complete guy. The only thing he doesn't do is score double-digit touchdowns, but I'll take seven touchdowns every year. He's a beast. He's a stud. He's one of the best Sun Double receivers to come out in quite some time. So with the 49ers, I, I'm just curious why this is the situation. Because if it's talking about market price, then I will tell you that he's worth whatever you need to pay. That's also something we're going to talk about a little later. If you're talking about importance to the offense, he might be excluding quarterback. He might be the second most important player on offense. Third at worst, only behind some order of Christian McCaffrey and Trent Williams and Brandon Ayuk. You can put them in whatever order you want, and I would agree with you because those three are interchangeable for the most important. You take one of them off, and the 49ers offense is going to drastically uh, not decrease. What's the word? They're, they're going to be worse, essentially. You take one of those three off. So why would you want to move off of off of Brain and Ayuk. And this admittedly has really been stirred up by the media and whatnot and all the conversations that are being started. I mean, I'm starting a conversation right now about it, but there's been rumblings for two or three years. And it feels like with each passing day, it's just more and more of a realistic reality that we're going to be facing is that Brain and Ayuk will be playing for a different team if not 2024, then when his rookie contract is up. And it's going to be really difficult to find a way to retain him with all the guys that you're paying because you're paying Debo. You're playing, you're paying Christian McCaffrey. You're paying Trent Williams. You're paying uh, on defense, uh, Nick Bosa and Fred Warner. Uh, their safety, they're going to have to pay here pretty soon. Uh, Huff, I can't remember his name. Uh, Hafunga is his last name, I believe. Talana Hafunga. I might be butchering that though. Uh, They're paying him. They're paying uh, Traverius Ward. They are spending money right now and holding on to him is going to be difficult. But again, I want to echo this. You find a way to retain Brandon Ayuk. He is not a player that you let walk. He is somebody that is so, so crucial to all of the success that you have on offense because he is a good route runner and he is really fast and he is able to get first downs, and he does find the end zone. This is, you, you, just, you can't lose him, man. You cannot afford to let him walk, and it's mind-boggling to me that they're in this situation. And look, I understand after the first two years when he was solid, not elite, that you have that conversation, but the last two years, he has been elite. And he has been the number one receiver on that team. You can't let him walk. And it's just a very weird situation, a very fluid situation that we're talking about seemingly every day. And it felt like a good time to talk about it here because he is a former Sun Devil. And a lot of people do care what happens to Brandon Ayuk next. A lot of former Sun Devil fans and former teammates and alumni like myself are following this situation very closely. We want to know where he goes. We want to know if he stays in, in San Francisco or if he moves, whether that's in free agency, whether it's a trade. We want to know what he's going to be paid. We want to know where he fits. And we're going to talk about that all today. So we'll break it down in just one moment. This is the Locked On Sunnables podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Fire TV is your destination for sports live games, highlights, in-depth analysis, and more. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences 
with smart TVs as well as a Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball, which is around the corner, or the college basketball tournament, which is coming up pretty soon as well, you'll want to make sure that you have Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us here at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV lets you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep you up to date on everything in the sports world, March Madness, NBA, Major League Baseball, and more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, traveling, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked it out before, you should trust me on this. To learn more, go to amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. Also want to talk to you about our friends over at Game Time because you shouldn't have to worry about getting tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the best, fastest, and easiest way to get tickets for sports, music, comedy, theater, and more near you. Killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and the best price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. You can see the view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Those all-in prices are going to show you the total upfront, so you know you're getting a great deal before you check out, and checking out's really easy, too. You get your tickets in seconds, two simple taps. They're obsessed with finding new ways to save you money. They have tickets right up to the start of the event, and even at an hour after it starts. It's the best place for last-minute tickets. Exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. They have zone deals. So you pick the section and game time picks the seats for big time savings. And the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code locked on for $20 off of your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code locked on. For $20 off, download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Wherever you get your podcasts, hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. I appreciate you guys as always for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. And a shout out to my everydayers who are here every day. Let's go ahead and get back into our conversation. Next question I have, what's he worth? And this is twofold. And we will start with what he's worth market-wise because the wide receiver um, market, I guess, is getting more expensive by the year. And you are seeing guys that are cracking $100 million contracts now. Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill, Amari Cooper, and A.J. Brown all have contracts that are $100 million or more. Stephon Tiggs is 96 million and you're going to see guys over the next several years that are also going to be cracking those numbers. Justin Jefferson, CD lamb, Jamar chase are all going to be due for contract extensions here pretty soon. These guys are averaging North of 20 million a year. Some are North of 25. Tyreek is averaging 30 million a year. These are, these are elite receivers that are making a lot of money. And I got news for you. Brandon Ayuk is an elite receiver who is going to be due for a lot of money. So where does he fall? It kind of depends on what your stance is with Ayuk. Now, me personally, I already said he's a top 10 receiver. And I will tell you, that's not me alone. There's a lot of people that would put him up there. There's people that would argue he's top five. He's top five in certain areas for sure. I can't think of very many uh, better route runners than him. I think Ayuk's the best route runner in football. He's one of the best deep threats. He's consistently able to convert his catches into first downs. He does a little bit of everything for you. So when you look at somebody who does that, you have to start gauging what they're going to be worth. And that's where I would tell you that 25 a year is where it starts. It starts at $25 million a year. So 
you lock him up to a four-year contract, it's going to be $100 million, which would match A.J. Brown's contract. That seems pretty fair. I would put Brandon Ayuk in that same tier as A.J. Brown. I think that they're very similar receivers who do a lot of very good things for you. I wouldn't have any issue with that being the the contract you get them. But here's the other part you have to consider is inflation. And market value goes up every year, and we just had a massive salary increase for the NFL. And the cap space went up a lot, which means players are going to make more money. So Brandon Ayuk, who is looking at free agency next year, not even this year, next year, man, he's going to be, he's going to be knocking at the door for 30 million, which is what Tyreek Hill's making. Devontae Adams is 28 million. Whether or not you would put Brandon Ayuk up against Devontae Adams and Tyreek Hill is irrelevant because the cap's getting bigger and the market goes up. And we see this every year, every single year, X player resets the market for X position only for it. Sometimes weeks later, days later, sometimes a uh, Y player resets, resets market for Y position, Z player for Z position. Like it, it's a constantly changing um, at atmosphere, I guess it it's constantly changing. It's constantly getting bigger. So Brandon Ayuk is going to be looking at some big time money coming up for him. This is a great situation that Brandon Ayuk has been able to stumble along into. He is so set to just absolutely cash out. And what also helps him are the other guys that we mentioned, Jettas, Lamb, Jamar, who are up for contracts or at least eligible for contracts in the case of Jamar Chase, he's going to use their contracts to be able to negotiate his own. God forbid if he plays 2025 on his fifth-year option instead of on a new contract, and he at a minimum does what he did this past year, yeah, he is going to be sniffing very close to 30 a year. So you need to figure out how you're going to approach this from a financial standpoint. But the other standpoint you have to consider is if you do trade him, what is that value? What is his worth as a trade candidate? It starts with a first round pick. Absolutely. And here's my, here's my thinking with that. You are looking at a very good wide receiver class. You've got Marvin Harrison Jr. You've got Romo Dunze, who I call Doomsday. You've got, uh, Malik Neighbors, you've got Keon Coleman, Brian Thomas Jr., uh, A.D. Mitchell, Xavier Worthy, Jalen Polk, Jalen McMillan. Like, there are a lot of guys in this uh draft class that's coming up. However, it's 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 a it's a family guy alliteration for you, and it's like a boat's a boat. But the mystery box could be anything. It could even be a boat. So you sit there and you have a first round pick and you're like, this rookie receiver could be anything. Like Brandon Ayuk is a Pro Bowl receiver, but this rookie could be a Pro Bowl receiver. So what would you rather have? The gamble of maybe he is a very good receiver or maybe he is okay. Or would you rather trade for a proven solidified number one? This is my thought process. And don't get me wrong. Like if, if the Cardinals were offering pick four, then the Niners do that in a heartbeat. But there's a lot of things that are wrong with that, obviously. But for teams that are contending that are uh, mid to late first round, they should absolutely be willing to part with a first round pick. I can tell you as a Baltimore Ravens fan, if I moved pick 30 for Brandon Ayuk, I'm thrilled. And a lot of other teams should be thrilled. The Chiefs would be thrilled. Um, the, I don't know if the Buccaneers would do it with Evans coming back, but you, you got several teams that should be willing to move that capital for him. So that's where it starts as a first round pick. You're also looking to try and alleviate some cap space, which part of that is moving on from my youth because you don't have to worry about paying him. 
So there's a lot of different moving parts here. And there's a lot of different scenarios that could play out. So let's talk about those scenarios because whether or not he stays in San Francisco is huge. But if he leaves, where could he go? Well, we're going to talk about that in just one moment. This is the Lockdown Sun Devils Podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find qualified candidates and professionals that are right for the role. That's why you need to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has all the tools you need to find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals that you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all of this while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many qualified candidates and so easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make that process easier and even launched a feature that helps write job descriptions and makes that process easier and quicker. Two and a half million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. One more time, wherever you're getting your podcast, hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. I appreciate you guys for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. Shout out to my everydayers who are here every day. Let's wrap up our conversation. Should he stay or should he go? If he stays in San Francisco is where we will start. I say yes. I've said that all podcast. I will continue to say that all podcast. He needs to stay. You cannot let him walk. I would so much rather move on from Debo Samuel than I would want to move on from Patrick or Patrick Queen. I, I got the Ravens on my mind, apparently. Then I would want to move on from Brandon Ayuk. You do not want to lose a number one receiver. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't want to lose Debo Samuel either. Dude is elite in more ways than one. I mean, just as a playmaker alone, he's elite. You don't want to lose him. You don't want to lose a huke though. And if you have to pick one or the other, you take the younger guy who's more durable and just profiles better as a number one receiver where I, or not a huke where Samuel profiles as just an elite playmaker. The two complement each other so well, and you can justify paying the two of them. The problem you run into is you have to pay Brock Purdy soon. You've got two more years of him on a dirt cheap contract since he was Mr. Irrelevant. However, after this season, he is eligible for a contract extension and you're going to have to fork over that money. I mean, unless you think you can find another Mr. Irrelevant seventh round pick who can come in and do what Brock Purdy did, but good luck with that. Good luck. They have a lot of guys to consider for the future. Talano Hafanga, their safety, is going to be eligible for a contract extension here soon as well. They need to figure out if they can pay him. They're going to have to redo contracts for Fred Warner and Drake Greenlaw down the road as they will be nearing the end of their contracts here within the next couple of years. Trent Williams, what do you do with him? What do you do with your rookie class? There's a lot of very difficult decisions which makes it difficult to imagine him definitively staying in San Francisco. I can sit here till I'm blue in the face and tell you he shouldn't move. They got to hold on to him, blah, 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 blah. But at the end of the day, the NFL is a business. And sometimes you have to cut corners and sometimes you have to make very difficult decisions. A very difficult decision they would have to make would be moving on for Brandon Ayuk. And again, till I'm blue in the face, I don't think they should move on from him, but you got to consider your future and you got to consider that you should be striking while the iron is hot. And for, for San Francisco, they need to realize that his value is never going to be higher. So you have several teams that should be calling. I have six teams that I want to highlight here 
as potential landing spots. I have three contenders and I have three rebuilding teams that need a number one. We'll start with the latter. The first team that comes to mind is the Carolina Panthers. They need to do anything to help Bryce Young. He was so screwed last year with no help. He had a 90-year-old Adam Thielen who had a really good year and nothing else. He needs help. You move pick 33 and you don't think twice about it. Sure. Now you don't have a pick till the third round. Oh no, I I don't have my second round pick because I moved it for Brandon Ayuk. I yeah, that sounds good to me. Instead of taking a dice roll like I mentioned earlier, now I just have a guy that I can confirm as number 1 and I can pay it. Second team New England, they have one of the biggest amounts of cap space in the in the NFL as of right now. They're probably going to be rolling with a rookie receiver or receiver, rookie quarterback. Why not get him a number one? And you pair him with Juju Smith Schuster and Kendrick Bourne. And that's a good one, two, three punch at receiver. You should be happy with that. But they definitely need to invest in the position. Here's a perfect opportunity. Tennessee also should be looking. DeAndre Hopkins, one year on his contract left, and he's getting long in the tooth. They need a young guy for whoever's quarterback, whether it's Will Levis or Malik Willis or anyone else that they bring in. They need someone that's going to be a reliable number one for a long time. That's Ayuk. Three contenders. We'll start with the Baltimore Ravens. Obviously, I have some bias, but I will also tell you that they're trying to win a Super Bowl, and the best way to win a Super Bowl is to surround your MVP quarterback with weapons. Zay Flowers, very, very good. Mark Andrews, very, very good. After that, you have quality guys. But imagine if they plug in a guy like Brandon Ayuk, and suddenly this passing attack that is quality becomes good or very good or great because you have him to go with Andrews and Flowers. Great decision. Houston Texans. I'm not going to lie. This might be my favorite spot for him. CJ Stroud dominated as a rookie. And Nico Collins and Tank Dell turned into household names. Let's give him one more guy. Let's give him Brandon Now You can see what he could do with the three of them. They made it to the divisional round last year when they were supposed to be picking number one overall. You give C.J. Stroud those three, I like your chances to not only win the division again, but to make a deep playoff run. Because that team is on the rise. They're a young team. They're a dynamic team. They got D'Amico Ryans as the head coach. I love that fit. Last team staying in that division, Jacksonville. The thing that's tough about Jacksonville is you're paying Christian Kirk, Zay Flowers, or Zay Flowers, Zay Jones, and they just signed Gabe Davis today. So... That's a difficult situation, but again, that's a true number one receiver. The three of those guys are number twos. Give Trevor Lawrence, Brandon Ayuk, and watch the offense finally reach the potential that you want to see out of it. There's several other teams. Kansas City should be willing to call. The problem is it doesn't seem like they value receivers that much. I mean, you traded Tyreek Hill, and I don't know if it's realistic that you would want to bring in Brandon Ayuk, should they? Absolutely. Same with Buffalo. They should also be taking a look. There's plenty of teams. In fact, there's probably 32 teams that would use Brandon Ayuk as a number one receiver. There's very few teams where he would not be a number one. So they'll have plenty of options, but they got a lot of figuring out to do. They got to figure out what they're going to do. If they hold on to him, if they move him, where's he going to go? How much is he going to cost? We'll be staying in touch with this very, very closely. This is one of the most intense situations I can remember for pro Sun Devils in the last several years. So stay in touch. Wherever you get your content, hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. Stay in touch with the show by following me on Twitter at RichieBrats36. The podcast as well at LO underscore Sun Devils. And a special shout out to my everydayers who are here every day. Again, I appreciate you all for tuning in. Don't worry. We still have plenty to talk about for Sun Devils football and basketball. The Pac-12 tournament is on Wednesday night. 
And that could be the last game of the 2023-24 season for the Sun Devils. And could it be the last game of Bobby Hurley's career at Arizona State? Well, don't worry. I'll keep you posted. So make sure that you stay in tune. Till the next time, you keep it locked right here on Locked on Sun Devils.